The discussions of the National Inaugural Agricultural Food Security and Economic Summit continued with Mr. Oswald O'Mealy, Director of the Coffee Industry Board. If the people making money out of a product are the traders, the buyers and sellers, and the producers can't survive, then they're going to stop producing. And that is what has happened to coffee. Money is in trading. There's no risk in trading. Tricks. Risk is in the production. An example, you plant coffee, and when you reach three years, and you to start your first good reaping, hurricane, you go back to zero, you have loans to pay. You rehabilitate, you borrow money, you rehabilitate. Three years, four years time, when you're supposed to start reaping again, another hurricane. We have no insurance. What does the farmers do? A lot of lose their house, their car, their property, everything, because there is no way that the industry can survive if the growers of the industry can't make a reasonable living out of what they're doing. The cost of transporting labor, transporting labor from lowland area to Blue Mountain is prohibitive, the road conditions. So when you come, to, to Clarendon and pick up a man or Olaba and pick up some people and drive from Olaba to Mavis Bank. What's the time limit in that? How much work do you get? And then in the evening you have to carry them back down. I remember suggesting to our Minister of Agriculture that we should have a local farm work program for coffee. The forestry department has thousands of acres of trees you can read some and help to cut houses so that you house the farmers up there. So when they come up, they spend two weeks on the farm or three weeks during the reaping season, cut the transportation cost, cut the input, the, the input cost, so that at the end of the day, they will earn more because they will reap more. These are things that we need to do to help the country to grow, to help coffee to become number one again. You know, I've been asking, Jump for argument's sake. Why can't you ad why can't the government advertise or the industry advertise along with the tourist board? Why don't you add coffee to your advertising? And make one package of advertising. No. Because everybody wants to be loud and master of everything. And unless we cooperate and we get together the agricultural se sector to see how we can minimize cost by pooling all our talents. We're going to be doomed. We now move to the topics, emerging opportunities, and livestock and fisheries. Dr. Keith Emil, Group Corporate Affairs Manager of the Caribbean Boilers Group, focused on the role of the livestock industry in the increase in agricultural production. I thought I'd start with this. There's going to be 57.7 million metric tons produced between 1913 in 1923, in the next few years. And of that, there's going to be, uh, it's going to be 49% due to poultry, 29% to pigs, and 16% to cattle. Those are the main ones. As the population moves from rural to urban, its diet changes. You can take any country, even within China, they have found the same thing. It changes in the rural areas from root crops uh, to meats and fish and vegetables in the urban areas. And it has to do with the, the, um, the, the change in the education profile of the, the, the people. Uh, the, my, the, the next paragraph refers to the fact that women are coming out of the kitchen barefoot, dirty, and pregnant, and they represent about 80% of those in the tertiary institutions. They're not going back into the, 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 the kitchen to peel no banana and yam and so on. So those in the food industry will have to adjust accordingly. Otherwise, they, they la import lines in the new supermarkets with uh, imported goods will get longer. Otherwise, if they can't get it there, they'll migrate. But I, I want to show you this quite early because most people have come to the podium to talk about producers, the farmers. And the story is not about producers at all, to be, to be quite frank. 
it, there, it, the, the, there is a value chain, and it begins with planners and R&D. And that includes the universities. I'm glad they're here today, uh, the research and development uh, profiles. It includes the uh, supply services. And all that is before you get to the producers. It's out, there are so many variables outside their control. They're in the middle. And after they produce, they, they, we go to the processors uh, and promoters and exporters and so on, again outside their control. And hence the poor farmers in the middle uh, are, a bit, are a bit like a reed blowing in, in, in the wind. Uh, and it's, it's affected them all this time. This is an example of what is required for small ruminant production. And as a result of not having all these things in place, goat production has never increased. Primary production alone will not result in significant returns on investment. This is a corporate view of the world food systems. Sales for the top 10 companies in billions of US dollars, just between two years in between. Sales in billions of US dollars. The blue ones represent small farmers. Um, Senator Grant has small balls, as you can see from that. And the, the, <laughs> the, the, and the farmers between the two years do not grow significantly from increased production. They don't. And uh, I suppose if you want to think of Caribbean and Jamaica broilers, we are smiling orange up there. Uh, and um, in two years, you see, they, they, it went from three, six to three billion to 409 billion in the food processing and traders category. So if you base your association on farmers with the small balls, you're going to, <laughs> you, 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 you will exist by people giving you donations and grants and so on. And there'll never be enough money generated internally to sustain yourself. Thank you for watching AgriScope. Join us next week when we continue with part two of the National Inaugural Agricultural Food Security and Economic Summit.